with Doug. <laughs> Dubbing, Dubbing with Doug. With Doug. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to the Natives Fly Fishing. We're going to try something new and start tying up some flies for you guys that either we've created or had a hand in creating or just really like to fish. This is a little pattern that I've been playing with. It's just a little jig nymph. We've been doing a lot of European jig nymphing. This is a little early stone pattern. You know, we're in the middle of November and it's snowing outside and Pretty soon those early stone flies will be coming out on the water and be real active. This is a pattern that kind of matches them. It's tied in a size 16 hook. You could tie it down to an 18, no problem. I wouldn't go any bigger than a 14. They tend to stay around that 14 to 18 hook range and smaller, but I haven't found any size 20 jig hooks yet. Quick shout out to Nick. Thanks for uh, leaving your beer here, Nick. A word to the wise kids, don't ever leave your beer to fly shop. It won't be there when you come back, but uh, let's get to tying. Real simple, straightforward pattern, man. Not a whole lot to it. Going to put the fly upside down to put the bead on using a tungsten slotted bead. I went to actually a size 18 bead just to put a little smaller head on this guy, make it a little bit more sleek. Small hole goes in first. Flip the hook around on the vise. And then if you need to, you just roll that bead around until it sits up front on that 60 degree bend. So I'm going to go ahead and put my thread right behind it. And if you like the position of your bead, you can go ahead and take your thread and just keep wrapping down on it until you trap it. And you'll see it stops moving. That's when it's trapped. using 8 op black thread. Um, you could tie this in a dark brown if you wanted to just to kind of play around with it. But these flies are typically, the insects are very dark in coloration. So I'm going to tie on a turkey biot or goose biot tail. When you're doing that it's really a good idea to take a little bit of dubbing and make just a tiny little bit of a hump on the back of your fly. Yeah, that's probably good. That way when the biots go up against that little hump that you've created, they'll flare out and keep their shape. So I've already cut two biots the size that I want. So I grab them to where they're convex to each other, where they're rolling out opposite. And then I just take those. You don't want these tails real long. You can measure them if you want, set standing them on top of the hook shank, but you don't need to do that. These tails, stoneflies don't really have that long of tails. So maybe about half of the hook shank, a little less. Somewhere in between a quarter and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and trap those in and if you'll see how those stayed flared out. They don't need to flare out like big time, but they'll keep that position. And then just to build a little bit of a body, these guys are slender, so you don't want to put too many thread wraps or anything crazy on them. You want to just, just keep a slender profile, but this helps to tie those buyouts in. Now to create the abdomen, I like using this vinyl rib from UTC. Since it's a smaller fly, I believe this one's a midge. Yeah. If you're using like a maybe like a size 14, you might want to go with a nymph size, I believe it is on it, but that midge size is really cool. So you can see how it tape how it rolls, it wants to roll. So the inside of the roll is flat is the flat part. So there's a flat part to this and a round part. You want to tie in that flat part. So put that flat part right up against the hook. Just roll it around in your fingers so it stays there. Catch it on the side of the hook shank. Tie it back to the biots. Run your thread back up. Now on this one you can use the rotary function of your vise if you want to, to wrap your rib up. But just to do it quick and dirty, which is the way I like it. I'm just going to use my hands. 
the rib will kind of tell you which way it wants to go. So you might want to go clockwise, you might have to go counterclockwise. It just depends on how the rib wants to roll around. You just want it clean, nice even segments. Um, the insects are deeply segmented. So I'm going to hold that rib to tie it off. I'm going to keep it in my strong hand. Use my opposite hand and just get good three wraps on it and then switch hands. Put two wraps in the front and then that way you've got that trapped in there real good. Got a watch dog. Watch dog. Dubbing wise, uh, you can use any dubbing. Black, you know, keep it in the same kind of coloration. I'm using a hairs mix from uh, Spirit River. This is just a traveler's dispenser. If you want to make it flashy, use uh, ice dub. If you want to make it more buggy, you can use like hairs ear plus or something like that, or just a really buggy uh, hair mix. But I want it to be a little bit buggy, but I kind of like just the simplicity of it. And to be honest, that's just kind of the first dubbing that I saw and grabbed. So I'm going to go ahead and dub this whole thorax. Just dub a little bit at a time. It's easier to underdub and add more than it is to take it off. Now if you wanted to, you could leave this fly be and fish it just like this and it'll fish fine. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more bugginess in it. This is uh, legs from Montana Fly Company. These are centipede legs and I think the smallest size they make. Barred centipede legs, speckled. These are the speckled tan minis. You could put small blacks in. You can go crazy with the legs. You know, you might want to add a bright color, orange, red, something like that if you wanted to. I'm going to keep this one a little bit more natural. So to tie on my legs, I've already pre-cut a couple legs. What I do is I grab the leg to where I have half of it in my fingers and half of it sticking out and then I take it, stick my thread right on it with my finger just like this and then I pinch the legs together and then what I'll do is set my string where I want it and tie them in and they are tied in. They're already flared nice, so that's cool. Sometimes you'll have to play with them and fix it a little bit if they're not flared real good. The other side, you do the same thing. You just do it on the top. Lift your thread up top, drop it down, get those legs in there just like that. Now, here's a cool way to just like fix your legs and then just kind of finish your thorax real good. So take a little bit of a dubbing. These legs didn't separate real good, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab them just like that. Now they're split good. Then I'm done with splitting them and fixing my thread wraps. So what I'm gonna do is grab the legs from the front and just take the thread up top just like that. I don't glue this fly because it's a buggy and I want to make that thorax stay buggy and I'm not going to glue it a fly this small if you throw too much glue on it you'll give it a funky look so when they're like this and especially with that slotted tungsten bead you can get that whip finish knot to fit right in there in that bead and that bead will protect it and those the fish teeth which is usually the culprit with tearing out the knots won't get to your knots if you do two quick whip finish knots and set them right in the back part of that bead. This is pretty much indestructible and it, it might, you might as well have glued it. And you don't have the mess of glue and you don't have glue on your fingers and you're not mad at the world. Because we're all a little too mad at the world lately. So that's pretty much the fly. I mean that's your early stone nymph. It's in the correct size basically for the actual insect. It's got a real slender look. My legs are a tiny bit long. I think I could leave them like that if I wanted to but I want them a tiny bit shorter so I'm just going to come in here and just nip the teep so to speak just give them a little trim keep it buggy like that um, you could use this as an anchor fly you could use it as your trailer fly 
or your trailer nymph and uh, it should do really well with you fish this all through winter this will be available in our stores but please this is an easy pattern um, I'll happily teach anybody come by learn it buy the materials we'll show you how to do it thank you guys appreciate it Good teacher, Doug. And then hold it. Uh.